My grandfather had started milking cows probably 1936 or so on this farm and uh, the herd had been sold I would say mid to late 80s because there just wasn't any money to be made as a conventional farmer. Dad said he went through some hard times but him working with NFO and involved with dairy all his life, he always told me the early 80s was about the worst period of that he ever saw. The, everything else price is going up and milk staying the same and so and at that time I'd only been farming for six years up through 87 uh, totally head over heels and trying to just keep keep my head above water I look at back at myself I graduated in 79 and we got married in 81 and that's all I ever wanted to do was farm so it kind of like no matter where the prices was, I loved to farm and <laughs> so you, you just farmed. Yeah, but it comes a point, a, a breaking point that, geez, why are you working 18 hours a day and, and hardly enough to pay the bills, you know? And just, and... But after doing that for several years, there's a frustration that comes from growing something and caring for it as much as we do that are organic farmers and seeing it just go into the regular marketplace, being lost on the bulk truck, being lost at the sale barns or whatever it is that we raise, just to see it be mingled in with the other conventional foods. So here in this area we got together and started talking about starting an organic marketing cooperative, which is what we ended up doing with the crop. And when we had that first meeting, we had no idea whether we'd get 20 or 30 the courthouse people. was full. Court, I think there was 180 people there. Right. It was just overwhelming. You know, we had no idea. We had done our homework, but not that good. Uh, George and, and Mark called me and uh, wondering if I was interested in, if we would be interested in producing milk for organic cheese and I said we surely would be and and uh, of course there it kind kind of went from there we we were one of the first uh, seven farmers that formed crop we started shipping milk on July 12 1988 one of the things that I uh, remember most vividly of, of being involved in the formation of Organic Valley was meeting with the farmers in Viroqua uh, every week, at least every week, if not more often, that original group of farmers would come together and sit around a table and talk about the future. And I was, I was uh, struck by their commitment to the effort. I was struck by their willingness to come together and to talk to one another and be respectful to one another through this whole process of forming a business and a cooperative. And there was also a belief that this thing could work. You know, and they, that never left the, the group of farmers that started crop. They believed right from the very beginning that they could be fairly represented in the market, they could get a fair price for what they were selling, and they could be organic farmers. And, and they've proven over time that that does work. The farmers who founded the co-op had a real belief in that the co-op would not be for the benefit of that group of people who formed it, but for farming. We have a tagline, marketing tagline called Farming for Future Generations. And they did some concrete things that put this into practice. The first thing was, every group of human beings has to have, when, you know, when they're trying to do something together, they have to have some kind of vehicle. And we chose the cooperative vehicle just by its very um, essence as a cooperative, it provides for democratic control. One member, one vote. It doesn't matter if you have one acre of vegetables or a thousand cows. When you're a farmer with Organic Valley, produce, beef, poultry, uh, eggs, dairy, you all get a vote. You know, our core, our core vision really was about making Family Farm viable and organics was the vehicle we saw to do that. So our core mission is about family farms. The rural landscape needs to be filled with family farms on the landscape. 
And in order for farms to stay viable, farmers need to receive a sustainable, steady, predictable price for what they produce. They needed consumers who if they spent extra time and extra money and grew food in a more environmentally sustainable manner would reward them for these practices. And so the farmer and consumers working together means the farmer will be rewarded by the consumer if the farmer grows food in an environmentally sustainable and organic way. If you want to produce a product that the people are willing to pay for at a better price to make uh, organic farming more profitable for us, so you can stay in the business and support the community and things like that. And one of the most important things the pioneers of Crop Cooperative did was they said we are not going to follow the way milk is priced right now. We're going to have our own way of pricing milk. It will be fair and it will be stable. Right from day one when the farmers got together they determined what they thought was a fair price. And now today we still do that. Each year when we build a budget for the next year the farmers are right there in the discussions about the pay price. The farmers set their target price and all the income that comes in first goes to the farmers side of the business, the pool side. They take their target price out and the balance goes to the business, which compared to most cooperatives is the other way around where it goes into the business and whatever's left goes to the farmers. From the beginning of crop, we never saw the word organic as just a set of standards that the government would own. For us, it's always been a word that has a very deep breath of meaning. Organic Valley defines organic as a system of philosophy and production that mirrors the natural laws of living organisms and emphasizes the interdependency of all life. Organic is, is just simply, uh, when it comes to food, uh, it's producing food uh, the way Mother Nature intended it to be. May the 6th, 1988. It was a lot, of, a lot to get started, I tell you. There was a lot to go through. Uh, there was no regulations, uh, no standards even set for organic uh, dairy products. So. Uh, Ray's herd of contented cows. We wrote the first real standards in the United States. I, I still got the original handwritten copy. Wow. And that's something that I'm real proud of crop. To this day, we've provided huge leadership in the industry because we believe in it. Right. And, and Organic Valley was one of the first organizations in the country to mandate certification, organic certification, to its growers. So this is the first certified organic cheese in the nation as far as that goes. Originally we we were working with a marketing cooperative and their initial uh, reaction to us was you just procure the milk, have the cheese made, you know, and put it on your dock and we'll don't worry about it, we'll take care of it from there. Well it wasn't far into our existence in their first year that we realized that you know we were just one item in a mini in their catalog that they were marketing and we weren't getting the sales for the small amount of volume we had so we realized that we needed to step up and develop a label and a, and a marketing plan. No one cared about selling our products as much as we did and therefore we needed to go into the branded business. And we found that there's nothing that's probably more important to the long-term benefit of our farmers than building a presence in the marketplace with our own brand, a brand that our farmers own, a brand that we can be proud of, and a brand that tells a beautiful story. It tells a story of organic farming and the dedication and devotion that it takes for farmers to present this food to the marketplace. Come on! You know, we were getting calls from all around the United States within a year or two. How are you guys doing it? Can we, can we join? And at that time, we thought we would never have much of a need, you know, to move into this region or, or to procure milk there. 
but we you know we went because our we felt our role was talking with farmers and, and engaging farmers in, in you know in organic production. And in 1995, we started a group of producers in Trout Lake, Washington. We took their milk to Portland, Oregon, and bottled it and distributed it in the Northwest. Then that was followed behind by milk in the Northeast, going to a packing plant in the Northeast. And we've just pretty much zigged and zagged across the state as the business has grown, trying to develop pools of milk in proximity to consumers. If we can keep the production in a region, provide the milk to that region, that market, and then balance from all over the country as we need to, it allowed us to have a distribution system that could reach from coast to coast. It's been amazing to watch the uh, natural product and especially the organic food market grow. Uh, starting in the industry in 1976 in California was Ma and Pa health food stores. They used to call us health food nuts. We were crazy about good food. They didn't understand it. Before we knew it, more and more people were demanding organic or asking for it. Um, the products became better. Um, they became higher quality, better tasting. And of course, they were always uh, better, safer products, fewer pesticides, and minimally processed. And so people's concern about their health, about the environment, started creating a demand for organic and it started going from the little co-ops who grew into big co-ops, from the mom and pop stores that grew into the whole foods markets and wild oats uh, of the world. And um, soon, um, Walmart was asking for it, and Kroger, and Wegmans, and Publix, and Harris Teeter, and all the big stores. Organic foods has come from being a movement to being a broad-based, part of the food system that's growing fastest of any category in the food system. I mean, there was times in, in the late 90s when the industry was really growing fast and, 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 and we felt we were at a real competitive disadvantage when the uh, major food marketers were becoming more and more involved in organic marketing. And, you know, there's other competitors out there. They weren't there in the beginning. They, they, they saw an opportunity to get into them markets, so they went out and got farmers too. And how will we compete in the marketplace with the financial backing that they have compared to what we have as a, as a meager little marketing cooperative in Wisconsin? In fact, during those early years, everyone was trying to buy us. Um, you know, and they were offering us two, three times our value. So we were maybe a five million, then we were an eight million dollar company, so we were being offered 16 million, 20 million dollars for our company. One of the reasons the co-op has been successful, and it's, it's not talked about a lot, is the unselfishness of the early founders. It's very easy when a group of people get together and develop something and it's going to start as a co-op and everyone's going to be sharing that once it starts to be successful that they close in, they close the organization. And so CROP was started by people who said the, func the purpose of this co-op is to serve family farmers now and in the future. And it was not going to be closed and owned by the few people who started it. Our farmer base and our, and our cooperative leadership and, and the board directors have always, you know, had a mindset that we need to maintain our independence as a farmer-owned marketing cooperative. And the reason why a co-ops become important is we want to know what the future is and a co-op is something that farmers can control to serve future farmers and that means we want to be independent. We would never dream of selling the co-op or anything like that. It's all about serving present generations and future generations and try to make family farm viable in the United States. You know, we just stuck to our mission and being true to who we are and good tasting organic food produced by our family farms and, and selling that to the consumer that we really are the, a cooperative of family farms and, and that's, that has proved to be a real successful model for us and, and we can do it without having the dollars that the large food companies may have.
Our marketing strategy at Organic Valley and Organic Prairie is quite simple but very powerful. We believe that the best spokespeople for our brands is the farmer. You will find farmers in every single aspect of our marketing and we have found that we are getting a lot of consumer loyalty just because they believe in who we are. We're the farmers and our brand stands for family farming. Consumers today want transparency. They want to understand where that food is coming from. They want to make sure that the animals are being treated with compassion. They want to make sure the employees and the farmers are taken care of. So that's what our brand represents today is more than just good organic food, but values that are enhanced throughout our entire system. When I was conventional, I never had anybody come up to me and thank me for making the milk. Never once. It happens all the time. I have, I have complete strangers drive by my farm, see the Organic Valley sign at the end of the lane, and drive down to thank me for, for making milk for them. It, it, it just, you know, unheard of, unheard of anywhere else. One of the really exciting things about Organic Valley is growing. Um, it's an organization that has always been growing from its very, very baby steps, you know, at a mere $100,000 a year, where we thought, man, if we made $200,000, we would have arrived, we would have been there. Um, and then we went to a million dollars, and that was phenomenal growth. And that came in a, in a series of steps. And there were periods of years where we grew actually 100% every year. And that's, that's kind of growth that just burns people out, but crop has always been so alive and full of its destiny that, that those years we went through was amazing uh, success. And, and in reality, once you install the idea or incorporate the idea that things will be changing, processes need to be updated, and once you get used to it, it enables you to continue the growth. So in reality, growth in the early years allowed us to develop the business practices and the mindset as managers and our staff, people realizing that, hey, Instead of just always asking the question, why do we have to change, they just assume that it's part of our process as we continue to grow. As we've grown, we've often wondered if there's a point where we should not keep growing, but of course, when every farmer wants us, every member wants us to take on their neighbor, that means you're doubling the business, so it's a constant uh, struggle, but really growth is, is serving farmers, and we grow not because there's a market opportunity, we grow because there's farmers that need to be served. You know, when we joined the co-op, you know, I, uh, I couldn't hardly believe that, that there was something like that because it, it was exactly what I was looking for for the whole, whole time I was farming. You know, and it, here, here these people come along and they said they'd buy my milk and I didn't have to use any chemicals and they'd, and they'd, they'd buy my milk and pay me a premium for it and, and it was great. You know, it's, it's made a lot of difference in, in our way, lifestyle. Uh, account of the extra money that we've made in organics that we've got we can do we can take care of the land the way we want to and and do our keep our buildings up and stuff like that and the, and the farmers say hey I'm having fun I enjoy what I'm doing I enjoy producing food you know for the for the consumers and and, uh, and, and my family's being rewarded for it and organic was a decision we made financially but now that we've been doing it it's become more than just a financial move. It, it really, we've seen the cow's health improve and better soil fertility and the overall position of the farm improve. And we've really, really grown to love it. And when you get life back in the soil and you get your soil balanced and you start producing a good quality forage that is full of trace elements and full of, of sugars for energy, uh, that rumen runs so smooth and that cow's immune system gets so healthy. Yeah, I can have excellent weed control, it's just the way you farm it. When I'm plowing like my ridge gown, if I'm mold boarding, you can just see the earthworms just like rolling earthworms. You can just see them looking out the window so you know your soils are alive and that, I just think it's so much better for the earth. And that's what organic farming is really all about, is trying to set up a system of farming that can go on generation after generation after generation. One of the most rewarding parts about the cooperative is to see how many of the 
members are passing on their farms to the next generation and how eager the younger generation is to embrace organic farming and being involved in the co-op and, and how it seems so obvious to the younger generation this is the way it should be. It's different for them. They, they, see, they see hope. Uh, they talk about a future in farming for themselves. Uh, and that's, that's so exciting for us as, as farmers and, and parents to see our kids knowing that they can come back and uh, take a part in farming. And that it's just not maybe one opportunity for them, but there's a whole range of opportunities that's uh, provided through our co-op for them. It gives me a real good feeling to know that uh, there's a future in agriculture for my children if, if they want it. The purpose of CROP is to create and operate a marketing cooperative that promotes regional farm diversity and economic stability by the means of organic agricultural methods and the sale of certified organic products. People often ask if we had any idea we'd succeed as we've succeeded and become as big a business we've be, become. And of course we had no idea that we'd even leave the state of Wisconsin or anything when we started, but we've allowed our mission to guide us. And the mission really is the guiding principles for all of us, whether we're in sales or marketing, operations. But it's also staff and truckers and plant people and thousands and thousands, maybe even a million consumers. It's all of those people working together to try and represent the farmers the best that we can, return a fair pay price to them and provide the very best quality organic foods to the marketplace. It's been very enriching to us to have this movement together and to be doing something about it with all the years of frustration with government policies and, and corporate and cooperative lock on the milk supply. You know, it's been good to try to do something to break out of that. Uh, this is probably the only co-op that has uh, the farmers and the consumers coming together as much as possible. And uh, I think that's what makes this co-op different than other co-ops. That is what reached the co-op to this point and what is going to continue to propel the co-op because it really is a pact between consumers who are interested in organic food and farmers who are interested in growing that food and they need each other. And so a lot of what we're going to do in the future is we're going to have to remain independent so we can maintain that mission. I expect in the next 20 years that we will remain true to our mission. To me that will be the number one the most important thing is we retain our culture, retain uh, our mission-oriented status, and that we serve farmers. As long as we keep those goals at the forefront of all of our planning and our thinking, then CROP will continue to succeed. 